factorize x squared times y minus z plus y squared times z minus x plus z squared times x minus z. Now this is uh, called a cyclic expression. Now once you factorize it, the factors would also be cyclic. I'll explain what cyclic means uh, once we factorize or once we finish the example. So the first thing that we can do is we can expand. Okay, there's nothing that nothing else that we can do at this stage. So let us expand the bracket. So expanding by x squared, it is x squared y minus x squared z plus y squared z minus y squared x plus z squared x minus z squared y. Uh, yeah, the next step is something uh, which uh, is not that intuitive, but uh, we are going to do a grouping. Now, when you look at this, if you look all over the place, you don't seem to see anything. But if you look at it in a different way, uh, let us look. Okay, if I want you to look at these two, uh, this and this together. And uh, this and this. What is that you can see? I'll give you a few seconds to think over this. I'm grouping. This is one group. This is the next group. And this is the third group. I don't have a timer. I'll give you a few seconds. Well, if you look at this, I think you can see these are expressions of x squared. Here, this has x squared and this has also x. Don't look at the sign. This has x squared, this has x squared. If you look at these two, these two have x's with them. And these two do not have x. So now this is called arranging in descending power of x. I'm not writing that. So let us rewrite by regrouping it. So let me use a different brighter color. So let me rewrite this same thing. x squared y minus x squared c. So this first group is terms of x squared. Now I'm going to write the terms of x. So I'm going to write minus y squared x plus z squared x. And finally, this is a group of x squared. This is a group of x. And finally, this is a group without x. So this is called grouping in descending powers of x. Okay, now it is simple. What is what is common in the first group? So this is the first group, this is the second group, and this is the third group. Now we're factorizing by grouping. Okay, so in this group, x squared is common. So you have x minus z. Here, minus x is common. So you have to be super be careful here. So general you may write x squared plus, suppose if you let me write x squared plus z squared. Now this is wrong because if you expand, if you expand this, minus, you will get minus y squared x, but if you, if you expand with minus x here, you'll have minus z squared x. Now to have this plus, I have to change this plus to minus. Now this is where most of you can do wrong. This has to be minus. You can check minus x times y squared is minus y squared x and minus x times z squared is plus z squared x. Okay, now what is common here? Yeah. You got y squared and y, so y is common. Here you got z and z squared, so y z is common. So from here y minus z. Okay, so the next step would be, this will remain as it is. What can you do here? Here, this is the difference of two squares. So this is y minus z times y plus z. Plus, this will remain the same, y, z, you can't do anything here. Now, what is that you can see? You have y minus z here, you've got y minus z here, and you've got y minus z. So you can factor out that y minus z. So if you factor out y minus z, you have x squared from this group minus x times y plus z plus yz. 
Okay, so now what will happen? So this is y minus z times, so let us expand this. So this is x squared minus xy minus xz plus yz. So this is y minus z times, okay, so again let us group it. What is common here and what is common here? So this is x is common here, so you have x minus y from here. And again, you have to be careful here, you got minus z common. So you have x from here, though it is plus here, you have factoring out a minus z, so you have to put a minus y here. Always good to check whether what you've done is right. You go back and expand, minus z times x is minus xz, and minus z times minus y is plus yz. So now what is common in this group? You can see y my x minus y is common. So we can factor that out too. So it's y minus z times x minus y times x minus z. Now these are factors in the cyclic order. So we can write this as x minus y times y minus z times x minus z. Now this, now what is cyclic order? Suppose if you write x, y, z, so this is a cyclic order, x, y, z, x. So you have x minus y as a factor, as, then you've got y minus z, so to, this is nothing, there's nothing wrong here, but to write this in a cyclic form, I should write z minus x. So it is x minus y, y minus z, then z minus x. So if you change x minus z to z minus x, you have to put a minus sign here. And so this is the answer. If you want to check whether the uh, factorization is right, you can expand this and you will, uh, you'll reach at this step or you'll reach this step.